it's continuation of the talk which I had on the last slide. It's uh, sort of continuation of uh, my uh, lifelong work. Uh, but this was done mainly by uh, uh, mainly with in combination with Joseph Papadakis and Nikolaj Cenk. So, unlike the previous speaker, I will have my talk almost completely without the questions, yes, just figures, or mainly with figures. So, this is just a motivation. Uh, there are many nice magnetohydrodynamic si simulations of the Akashian disk, which shows that the disk is uh, sort of inhomogeneous. So, this one is quite old from uh, 2003 and although uh, the quantity which is plotted here it's something like integrated vertical magnetic flux uh, it can be assumed that uh, the disk is really inhomogeneous in the density as well and the many simulations show uh, some orbiting structures uh, near the in the inmost edge of the black hole. And, well, if there is uh, some orbital modulation present, there is a natural question why we do, do not see it in the power spectra of AGN. Uh, well, basically, the problem is that uh, if you include just uh, the innermost edge of the disk, there is uh, always, I mean, there always appears in the simulations the orbital frequency and even the higher harmonics depending on the inclination. But if you if you include uh, the disk with uh, some broad range of radii, uh, because uh, the orbital frequency depends heavily on radius. You got you, you get this nice sharp feature smoothed it away, and in many cases you get just some additional break in the power spectrum or something like that. So uh, the idea of Joseph was uh, to include uh, the scenario of. Uh, Reprocessing of X rays from Corona, which is uh, uh, well, quite modern topic, or uh, many people are working on, on, on this. And the idea is that uh, if you have uh, some kind of lamp in the Corona, whatever it, it is, and if you take it on, on, on the axis of the the black hole, I mean, on the axis of, of the disk, uh, the irradiation of the disk itself depends on the radius, and of course on the height of, of the lamp, but depends heavily on the radius. Generally, it decays like radius uh, of minus three. So, by the irradiation, you basically get just the emission from the from from the or signal from the innermost part. So there is a chance that uh, if we uh, s somehow filter uh, this reprocess signal from the from the data, we can recover just the signal from the from the innermost part. So what we did? Uh, okay, we we did a simulation uh, where we included just very narrow uh, innermost part of the disk. Uh, we, uh, okay. yeah, that's what I and uh, well, on the first figure then there, there were arcs like this. So we tried to model uh, overabundances of material by something very simple. And so we model it as a, as a orbiting segments on the innermost in part of the disk, which which are appearing randomly and 
have some distribution of, of weights and lifetimes. Ah, okay, it's here. So uh, this was just to fake somehow uh, the effects from the magnetohyamic sim simulation. On the other hand, we've used uh, quite realistic uh, template for, for the reprocess spectra, assuming that uh, the disk is cold and neutral and there is a uh, uh, power corona uh, radiating, radiating the, the disk. And okay. Okay. <laughs> so basically, in the simulation, there were three most important parameters: the lifetime of of uh, the orbiting segments, uh, something like uh, the distribution of, of their sizes, and then we include third parameter, which. Uh, was a sort of contrast. We simply assumed that, uh, or tried to model these overabundances like semicircular arcs, which are reflecting slightly more than the rest of the of the innermost ring. And, uh, so uh, we've tried to make it as realistic as possible uh, on the, the second part of the analysis so uh, because because we have we had uh, quite realistic reprocess spectra we uh, tried to uh, collect the signal in these energy bands and uh, our aim was to somehow produce signals which could be observed by XM Newton or Suzaku or, or whatever. And so we've made uh, several very long rounds and then we've, then we've cut it the light, the light curve into pieces and uh, try to average it uh, in a way in which uh, real data would be treated. Ah, again. Uh, before I show the uh, results, I would like to say a few words about, um, about uh, the process itself. Uh, yesterday there was talk by Michal Dovchak about uh, this uh, reverberations where you have uh, the core and the process signal. So, Basically, what, what, what we have is that there is, on some radius, there is, there is this orbiting segment uh, which is irradiated by some point in the corona. And well, if, uh, okay, we assume that, that this thing is somehow variable itself. And if uh, there was just a single delta function like flash uh, of the corona, the uh, signal from the corona arrives to all points of the ring at the same time. But because the observer is at some inclination, uh, the signal which is reprocessed or reflected by different, different uh, positions uh, on the different phases on the on the ring, arrive to observe it at different times. So this is just a sketch. This is cartoon as well. Uh, but basically, the response functions uh, look like this uh, because the ring, which we assumed is is narrow, the general shape of the response function looks like this. So uh, again, if we had an instantaneous flash in the corona, uh, this is what observer would see. And then because uh, the segment which is there, this overabundance, is orbiting, it depends on the actual phase uh, of uh, 
the segment on the ring. Uh, it, it depends on the position how how the pre-processed emission looks like. So, uh, so these are responses uh, to instant to an instantaneous flash. Um, the, uh, and the, their shape depends on on time or on the on the on the phase thing. And then uh, because mm, we we sort of see part of the or we think that we see part of the original emission from the corona, and that the reprocess uh, or reflecting part. Uh, of the radiation, it's sort of convolution of this thing uh, with the primary uh, primary signal, but uh, this thing itself is non-stationary, so it works basically both as a filter to the original to the original signal and as as a modulation. This is the these are results. Uh, what is here is uh, okay. It is it is difference of power spectra uh, calculated from two different energy bands. Uh, basically, it's this band between five and seven kilo volts, which is dominated by the iron line and. Uh, 2 to 4 kilowatt volts, which is dominated by the primary emission from the burner. And the main aim of this procedure was to look whether this procedure can enhance uh, the signal due to the orbital, orbital modulation. And it turns out that in several case, cases it, it can. Uh, well, in the columns, uh, there is always identical lifetime of, of the segments. Uh, in rows, there are different inclinations, and these colors are well uh, starting from black through and going through green and blue to this uh, pink or whatever it is. Uh, the contrast of the of the segment is decreasing. So in this case you can see that if you if if we are lucky enough or if we have this uh, this specific combination of of uh, uh, lifetimes and widths of the segment uh, there is really some enhancement enhancement of the variability in well, between two, these two these two energy bands. However, uh, specifically in this case, it's quite the other way around, uh, and it's even the variability can be even suppressed, uh, and it's even worse if if we are having a larger inclination of the disk and larger contrast of the thing. I mean, larger contrast of the segments. And the problem is that, uh, again, there are two competing effects. One is the orbital modulation, which is uh, itself is enhanced if we have a higher inclinations because uh, uh, the relative effects and the Doppler shift and so on are more prominent for, for a higher inclination. But then there is this filtration. I go back. This thing, a bit of this thing, uh, it's uh, difference between travel time from the from the nearest point of the ring and the farthest point of the ring observer. And this is, of course, as well enhanced if we have higher inclination. So. Uh, We've seen that uh, these 
this effect, this suppression of variability uh, appears almost uh, in all cases. In some cases, it uh, is also also present, but it can change uh, the peak of the vari variability, which is shifting. And it's not exactly on the on the on the orbital time scale, just because there are, there are two two things which are competing each other. So, conclusions. Well, we uh, it appears that uh, this this process can really, in some cases, enhance uh, the signal from from the innermost innermost part of the ring and. We can see, or could be in principle, uh, able to see some fingerprint of the orbital motion. Uh, however, there are these two competing effects, and it's not, not it's not easy to disentangle them from, from each other. So, uh, other studies are needed. Uh, well, we are current, currently working on. The things mostly we are trying to look now at the data, I mean at the real data, and try to see whether we can see something like this, or at least uh, if there is a way to cut the parameter or constrain the parameter space of uh, possible models of uh, this thing. So. I will stop here. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now for the questions.